Hello, this is the Hall Institute. Our public policy forum today is going to examine the question once again of stem cell research. I'm delighted to have two of our distinguished guests continue. Um, first is uh, Father Tad Paholchik. He's the Director of Education at the National Catholic Bioethics Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And Dr. Rick Cohen, who's Assistant Research Professor at the Keck Center for Collaborative Neuroscience at Rutgers University. Gentlemen, thank you very much for continuing to be here on our second part of looking at the question of stem cell research. Glad to be with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Give us a little of your background for those people that didn't see uh, the first uh, segment so that we know where you've come from and what your research interests are. Father? Well, my background is uh, a scientific one as well as a philosophical slash religious one. I studied neuroscience at Yale University and earned a doctorate in that, and then afterwards did postdoctoral work at Harvard uh, and Massachusetts General Hospital looking at some uh, related issues that I had worked on as a graduate student. And then after that I went to Rome and studied to become a priest, and there I focused on bioethics and on um, dogmatic theology. So it kind of I did my best to bridge both worlds, if you will. And uh, since then, I've been working at the National Catholic Bioethics Center and speaking on stem cell research, cloning, uh, areas like assisted reproductive technologies, the moral concerns that are raised by in vitro fertilization, and also looking at end-of-life issues like tube feeding and so on. Uh, and that has become something that I spend a great deal of time just traveling around the country and doing. Dr. Cohn? Well, I'm a uh, scientist. I'm originally from Canada. I grew up in Montreal. Did some uh, degree work in biochemistry and uh, pharmac pharmacology and therapeutics. And did some studies at uh, the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and Neurology and Neurogenetics at NIH in Bethesda, Maryland. And now I run uh, my own section or the own section of uh, the lab at the Keck Center looking at uh, human stem cells and a variety of different types of human stem cells and their medical uses potentially in models of spinal cord injury and uh, multiple sclerosis. Now, um, Rutgers was being planned as one of the major sites for the study of uh, biotechnology in terms of, in terms of stem cell research. And it was part of the bond issues that were defeated in New Jersey in November. Does that set back your research? Uh, is that a problem? for the directions that you all had planned to go in? Well, there's really two prongs of this. Uh, there was one bill that was passed for appropriations for money to build a new stem cell institute, and that was a collaboration between uh, UMDNJ, Robert Wood Johnson, and also Rutgers. That has passed, and there was a groundbreaking. And then the other bond issue was to appropriate $450 million over the course of 10 years to pay for research in competitive grants and also for internal programs, very much like an NIH-style intramural program, an extramural program. Because that bond issue didn't pass, uh, there's less money for those uh, programs, but there still is um, some pool of money for research uh, in the form of research grants. Do you think that the voters turned it down because they're concerned about more bonded indebtedness, or did they turn it down because they're concerned that they really didn't understand the ethical implications of what's behind stem cell research? Um, I think it's a combination of both issues. I mean, there's always a certain percentage of people that will uh, not open their wallet ever, and who wants to pay more taxes, and there's a general fear in New Jersey. Now, I'm not a voter because I'm only a landed immigrant, not a citizen, and so I don't know much about the voting process, but from what I can gather from friends and colleagues, um, most of them who I know voted for it because they're scientists, and uh, the few people who I know who don't were really tired of paying more and more money and didn't want to have um, more debt. So there, there was, you know, you, you, with this type of issue, you're really pulling in two different directions. And, of course, there's, you know, the religious aspect. There's some people who are religious who have those views that, you know, embryonic stem cells 
are the only type of cells that we're, we're going to be used for this bond issue, which is not really true. It's probably a very small percentage. Um, and given the new discoveries of how to reprogram cells, maybe even less so than you know a year or two ago. So I would say a combination thereof. So if New Jersey gets its house in order, I think a re -bond, or another bond issue on, on the subject uh, may happen. Now, the governor posed this as partly an answer to the fact that New Jersey is losing um, major uh, corporations and constellations of corporations in what was our really two biggest areas in New Jersey, the pharmaceutical companies and also the high-tech companies. New Jersey was at the forefront once of high technology, especially with Bell Labs. And he's posing this as now an alternative industry that could come in take up a lot of our of our trained personnel and move us in the 21st century. Is that is that a likelihood in our lifetime to be seeing that sort of mass production of uh, cures through stem cells? Well, I think once we know how to create large quantities of stem cells, either starting from, you know, the embryonic stem cells or reprogramming cells, and pharma or the biotech could use those to invent new treatments or, or new high-throughput assays to look for drugs, I think there's a, there is a point. So if you would have a spreadsheet on a yearly basis and show the improvements to the populace of New Jersey, I think that's one way of explaining that the $450 million would be an investment. But the track record for spending in New Jersey is not that great. Yes. I mean, I would add something to that in the sense that I think the, gover the governor's argument was basically, you know, if we don't fund in this way, you're going to hear the whoosh of the scientists rushing, stampeding out of this state, you know, kind of to instill a sort of fear in people that this was going to cripple uh, the biotechnology sector. And I think that's a very unrealistic way to paint it in the sense that stem cell research at the moment represents a relatively small fraction of the total layout of expenditures for medical research and bio research. And, you know, this is not something that, uh, that is on the scale that it is often uh, presented as being. And I think that, you know, we have to be very careful to distinguish some of the hype from the concrete truths that govern these discussions. We're going to break and we'll come right back and discuss that issue. <laughs>